Welcome to the final part of the NVMet Getting Started tutorial series. In this part, we would like to analyze our output data in Leonardo. You can start Leonardo via the NVMet headquarter. To load data into Leonardo, you must go to the data navigator on the right hand side. After your simulations have finished, you can find their output data in their project folder. Here you can select different kinds of outputs. We will select atmosphere outputs. Now you can see different files that include the atmosphere data of the specific time. Just pick any time you would like to analyze. You can also pick a second file set to compare your data. After selecting your data, you can click Extract Data to Map, where you can create 2D and 3D maps. Now you can select the data you want to visualize. Here we chose potential air temperature in degrees Celsius. This will be the layer which is visualized across the board. Under Contour, you can set data you want to be represented in contoured lines. We chose wind speed in meters per second. Under Vector, you can define an X, Y and Z value. From these, vectors across the map are being drawn. In the default mode, the wind direction is represented here. Afterwards, you can define where your area should be cut. You can set the axis and the grid layer. In our example, the model area gets cut at the X, Y axis at 1.7 meters height. After adjusting these basic settings, you can extract the 2D map. On the left hand side of Leonardo, you can modify all elements of your map. You also have the opportunity to zoom in and out if necessary. Under general settings, we can edit things like the text, the labels and the axis of our map. Next to the general settings, we can see a tab for each type of layer we have previously defined. We can activate or deactivate layers by right clicking on them. We will now edit our data layer design by left clicking on the data layer legend tab. Here we can select a color palette for the different values and define at which index of our color palette Leonardo should start to colorize the map. We set this value to 10. Under the general settings, we can edit the title, the unit name and the number of digits from each value of our data layer legend. Next, we activate the special layer settings and click on NVMet defaults. Now the default values for buildings, vegetation and so on are selected. When activating the vector settings in our example, the wind direction is shown. You can adjust the length scale of the vectors and their color to make them more visible. When activating contour layer settings in our example, isolines around similar wind speed areas are drawn. You can define a span of isoline values that should be displayed in the map. Also you can edit the color and width of the lines or edit their labels. When you're done visualizing your data, do not forget to save your progress. If you want to compare two datasets, just select a second file set and click Compare 2D. You also get the option to explore grids. For that, you just need to right-click on a grid and choose Explore Grid. You can now select the data you want to analyze on the right and set a time series start and end by right-clicking on the left. Alternatively, you can set a time series to the whole range. If you like, you can export the measured data for this single grid to an Excel file. Now we will have a look at 3D maps. For that, just go to Extract 3D Map and click on Extract 3D. As in Spaces, you can move the area by holding the Shift key and moving your mouse, and you can change the point of view by holding the Control key and moving your mouse. As a substitute, you can also use the View Control widget. Here you can also zoom in and out of your area. Next, we activate Data Layer 3D and choose a reasonable range for our displayed data. You can also display the air temperature of a specific part of your model area by defining a cube. If you activate Jubilobel's 3D settings, three-dimensional vectors are drawn. In our example, the airflow is displayed. Thank you for watching our Getting Started series, and if you like, you can visit our website or check out our other tutorials here on YouTube.